17 years old now. Uh, today, I'm gonna give a presentation for introducing China. So, if we talk about China, what's the first thing a person comes in your mind? Great Wall. Great Wall, right? And a lot of people? Yeah, a lot of people. So, Panda? Hmm? Panda? Panda. Panda, uh, Panda yeah. Chopsticks. So they are the symbol of China. So, um, first, the full name of China is the Re People's Republic of China. And uh, this one is Chinese national flag. Um, the current design used the red color as its background, uh, which symbolized uh, symbolized the heroes who died during the uh, revolution, and they used the yellow color for it for the stars. Um, the yellow color mainly symbolized the glorious history and. Uh, the culture of the Chinese people. And it was the partly inherited from the colors of the uh, Soviet Union. Do you know the Soviet Union? Um, which was the combination of the red and yellow too. So this is the Chinese national emblem. Um, the emblem, which, sorry. So the emblem, which composed by the uh, national flag, and Tiananmen, and the jeer, and the greens, which, which symbolized the uh, new China. So the Tian, Tiananmen is in Beijing, you know Beijing? Beijing is the capital of the China. And now I'm gonna introduce, uh, this, this is the map of China. Uh, China has 23 provinces. Uh, I think it's the same meaning of the states in America. And, have, and China has four municipalities, uh, like Beijing, Tianjin, uh, Beijing is here, Tianjin is near the Beijing, and the Shanghai and uh, Chongqing, here. And it has uh, five autonomous regions, and two special administrative regions, Hong Kong and uh, Macau. Hong Kong is here, and Macau is here. So I'm gonna introduce the Shanghai. Uh, Shanghai is my work. Shanghai is my second hometown, and I was born in Shanghai. Uh, Shanghai is the largest city in China, and one of the largest uh, metropolitan areas in the world. And it located uh, at the uh, Chinese Central Center Coast, uh, which is also uh, at the mouth of the Yangtze River. And Shanghai is the economic uh, center of China. Um, you can see the, this tour. This tour we call it the Orin. Tall Pew Tower. And uh, this one is the <coughs> Jinmo building. They are very tall. And here's a uh, some more picture of China. So have has anyone been to Shanghai or Beijing? <laughs> uh, if you had a chance, I, I suggest everybody just to go around. It's a very awesome place. And now, um, there are two important rivers in China. So we're just getting a mic for him so we 
can hear him. Go back here. Sorry for uh, thank the you. interruption. Uh, there are the two uh, very important river in China because uh, I think they are the home uh, mother river of China. The first one is the uh, we call it Huanghe or Yellow River, and the second one is the Yangtze River. We also can call it the uh, Changjiang. And the Yellow River is the second longest river in China and the sixth longest in the world. And uh, it is about uh, 5,464 kilometers. And I think we can look at this picture, the Huanghe cross uh, Nai province and empty into the Bohai Sea. And uh, Yangtze River is the longest river in Asia and China too. And uh, it is the third longest river in the world. And it is about uh, 6,300 kilometers. Um, it flows from its south here in Qinghai province and uh, is tall it empties into the uh, East China Sea at Shanghai, here. So, do you have any questions about the river? No? Okay, and so the next one So here are the picture of the, this is Huanghe, and the, uh, we, we can also call it uh, Yellow River, and this is Yangtze River. So the next one is the Great Wall. So uh, the Great Wall um, in China is known as the uh, one of the seven great wonders uh, of the world. It is located in the north of China. And it is about uh, six uh, kilometer, six thousand kilometers. And um, the Asian people uh, started to build uh, the wall in the seventh BC century. And uh, made by uh, and with the earth break and storm um, and joined into the uh, Qin Dynasty. The Great Wall was built in ancient China is to protect the country because uh, in the ancient times many countries uh, try to attack the uh, ancient China. So they built a long wall and every uh, and put arrange the army on the Great Wall. If they see the, uh, if they they see other countries people come, they can fire. And uh, uh, the people who see the smoke and they can transfer the information. So the Great Wall. I think the best place to see the Great Wall is in Beijing. So um, there are also uh, many beautiful sites in Beijing too, but uh, I don't have any time to show this. So uh, if you have time, just welcome to China and to visit Beijing or Shanghai too, or other place. And now I'm going to introduce the education system uh, I, uh, I want I want to compare the education system different education system between America and China so the America is American education system is about is 12 years uh, compulsory education and uh, the system includes 70 percent uh, public school, 
and 30% uh, public school. Is it right? <laughs> yeah, Mary. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, the China, uh, Chinese uh, education system is nine years compulsory education. Um, the most of the school are public, uh, so uh, for the uh, American higher education was considered as the most best education in the world. It's true, right? And comparing the elementary education between the China and the America, people's universal view will be Chinese elementary education aims to build the foundation of, uh, of the education with more study and less thought. The teacher always gave uh, the teachers and the school and parents always give students the task, task and the homework to do. Just do best, do best. They don't think a lot and the teacher always give the information to the student. Student, most of the students um, don't think too much. Not like Ameri American students, right? Yes. 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 Is this true? Yes. Because I'm not, uh, I'm not American, so I research this information online. And uh, American um, education aims to build, build such an uh, education to raise the creativity with less study and more thought. Um, American education pays more attention to raise students' uh, self-confidence uh, and independence and the spirit of sporting themselves. But Chinese education is um, emphasizes on um, training the students to be strict, be strict and uh, rigorous spirit. <laughs> uh, so uh, I think American education, so I think American parents, they pay much attention on the practice, uh, practical practice, because um, they think you, you cannot just give the information to their child. And uh, they think it, uh, in their childhood, they just need to play. It's time to play, not, not time to study. And they can learn from study, right? But Chinese parents always think um, their children, should be should study and study and study, and they always give their homework and arrange them to go to the class, and they don't give them free time to play. Okay, question. So at what time, like, what's the time you usually go to school in China, and at what time the classes end? Okay. How long is the day? Uh, for example, uh, I haven't graduated from my eleventh uh, grade, but I look I study. Um, one year, almost one year. And I always get up, get up at 5.30. And then I ride my bike to school and we have early morning classes, like about two hours for early morning classes. And we study, study until the noon. And we, we can go home for uh, eat lunch. And we came back, we come back at one o'clock. The cl afternoon cl uh, class says start at one o'clock and we, we keep studying until night and I remember that time uh, yeah night and that time I always uh, got home at usually at 11 o'clock at evening wow. yeah in my in my city but in some big city like Beijing or Shanghai they are similar li uh, like some American school. They just need to go to school at eight or nine o'clock and uh, uh, come home at 
four o'clock or three o'clock. Because um, in the big city, they have they have more chance to uh, go to the better school. So I think they need to like just a kind um, a kind of reason. If you don't study hard, uh, study hard, uh, you are not you are lazy. So you may out of the game. We call I call it a game. So do you understand? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so, so there are some difference. I'm gonna show to everybody. The first is go, uh, uh, go and the class and teaching method and the relationship between teacher and students and exam result score. The first one is education goal. I think uh, we already talked about American education is like creative. Um, um, like Chinese students, they don't, they do not usually ask questions on the, during the class because teacher already gave them the information. They just need to study. Um, uh, for the teacher, in China, in Chinese classroom, we always have a platform and teacher stand on the platform and see everybody. It gives, it makes students feel a kind of respect. So the students think they just need to st uh, sit here, and it's a kind of respect for respect for teachers. So they, they don't ask any questions and uh, talk about the classes. They just listen and write down and study. But in America is different, right? They, they can disagree with teachers. So in my accounting class, I saw some uh, the teacher put the number on the board, and the the, the teacher may put the wrong number, like the six eight eight, and the it should be the eight six six. And the student noticed it, and student said, "Teacher, it should be the eight eight six six." And teacher, "Yeah, yeah, good." <laughs> but in, in in China, I think the teacher will be embarrassed. So the, the student is afraid to say that until the teacher notices the problem. And the class, uh, American is, yeah, already <laughs> talk, is free to disagree with the teacher and the class size is small. Usually uh, in American high school, they are uh, under 45 or 30 students in one class. But in China, we always have over the 45 or more. Because Chinese has lo a lot of students. It's a problem and school, we cannot say it, uh, there are less school, but it's still not enough for the students. And the source too. Um, in my in my class, in my high school class, there are almost eighty students in one class. Can you imagine many people sit here and in the summer it's too hot. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not like a big classroom, just like this this classroom. Wow. So uh yeah. So the the teaching methods, uh, American student, Amer American teaching method is the student oriented method. Uh, the teacher's duty is to motivate and direct students have full free, uh, have full freedom to interrupt and uh, uh, query their teachers. I think the advantage is for students, is the student have more motivation motivation to figure out what they don't understand, because they they can ask questions, they can argue with teacher, 
or uh, conversate with their classmates. But in China, the teacher, the teacher study is to give students large amount of knowledge. And uh, uh, for me, from formulate their daily behavior. Um, I think the advantage of this one is the contents is focused on on theory, and students can develop good basis. I, because Chinese education is aims to uh, build the foundation of the education, so they can learn very well, very well of the basic knowledge. And the uh, relationship between the students and the uh, teachers. Yeah, merit, I, I think it's friendship because when I see my uh, teacher, I always say hi or say uh, how's going and just greeting, right? And some, some American just uh, uh, some American students may uh, greet, may say hello like hi bro, how's your day to teacher. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's very, it's very good because the relationship between the students and the teachers is closed. But in China, just like the teacher and uh, students relationship, it's, and the students is shy to say hello to teacher when they. Uh, met, meet, and um, because we have the platform in the classroom, so it cause it makes a great distance between the teachers and students. So it's not it's not good for the uh, teachers and students. And. Uh, um, Exam system. Um, I wanna, I wanna introduce the one part of the exam system. Uh, normally, we always get the score after the exam, right? But in America, the teachers always give the score to the students' parents. All the students, they they don't give show other other uh, students. But in China, the teacher after. The exam, we always hold a meeting, and every parents come, and they print out the every each student score and put in front of the classroom and let everybody see. the the reason The reason I think it, the teacher wants uh, the student study more hard, try more best. So I think it's not good because it's privacy, right? But it's still, they still doing it. So, um, the last one, I'm gonna introduce the relationship in lovers because I asked suggestion, suggestions few days ago, and uh, I I don't remember which one which person tell me she he want to know the relationship in lovers. So, the first is I love you is deep between the China and America. I saw a news on the internet and for the American boy and American girl, like if they can, uh, they, they meet in a prom and dance and do other things. <laughs> but, but it's not a true relationship and it's not easy to say I love you. Uh, to the girl, the boy say I love you to the girl, and it's I think it's a serious uh, question for the American boy and the American girl. But um, after say I love you in America, I think they they start dating, right? <laughs> 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 but in China, they always. Dating, uh, they always say I love you. Uh, no, <laughs> they always, uh, they always dating. Uh, dating first, 
and say I love you. And it's common to say I love you to the girl because the boy loves girl. But I think the language is different. So well the translate it make it doesn't make sense. Um so in America it's serious to say I love you to the girl, right? So for the boy who are here um you can see you can say um <laughs> so you can say I love you in China uh, to the girls. Don't afraid to say it. Um for the date, like they if they can go to the cinema to watch a movie or go to the restaurant. But I want to um which I wanna introduce in this part is for the bill after who paid the money in China, uh, the Chinese man or boy always pay the whole money. But in America, they always separate, right? Right. So <laughs> if you have an American, uh, if you have a Chinese boyfriend, next time have, you don't need to pay the money. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And uh, the last part is the view of sex. For this part, uh, I think Chinese parents they are embarrassed and shy to say, like, uh, after 18 years old, you can sex with anyone, but you need to do some protection. But it, it will not happen in, happen in China. The, the Chinese parents is shy and embarrassed to say to say uh, say to their children. But in America, does anyone's parents say to you? <laughs> because I don't. I'm not American, so I research some information online. The it shows me the American parents. The most American parents taught their ch uh, children, you can have sex after 18 years old, but you need to do some protection to protect yourself. Yeah, yeah right? But in China, they are uh, a kind of shy. And my mom and my dad um, didn't uh, mention it to me. But we all know it. <laughs> So, um, yeah, this is the last part of the uh, presentation. And thank you so much for coming and listening to my presentation, and welcome to China. Uh, if, I do the, if I do the same presentation next year, I may 